I don't know if you guys hear that fucking beat, that rhythm, that sweet, sweet underlying tone. But while Hans and David are out doing whatever they're doing, there's one man that stays loyal to the soil. Yeah. There's one guy that never calls in sick. There's one guy that's never gonna stop. Some people call him the Big Red Machine, the Memphis Strangler, the man with the most sets in Kill Tony history, ramping up for the 10 year anniversary, over five years on the show, hundreds of sets. I give to you the one and only William Montgomery. God, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Ever since getting our dog, I started working at the vet's office, and I've got to tell y'all, the number of dogs identifying as cats these days is outrageous. <laughs> we actually had to put a dog to sleep, and it was kind of sad because his last meal request was a pair, to, a pair of Jordan sneakers. <laughs> The vet has a board of directors full of horses, which sounds good, but we can't ever agree on anything because they never vote yay. <laughs> we had to pump one horse full of steroids and the side effect was he started setting home run records. <laughs> okay, that's my time. <laughs> Exactly 59 seconds from the man, the myth, and the big red legend, William Montgomery, rocking what appears to be a brand new hockey jersey here tonight. It's Christmas, huh? It is. I got to give it up. Rest in peace, Derek Bugard, the boogeyman. I recently got into hockey, and I love watching his YouTube videos where he's beating the shit out of people, but he ended up getting addicted to opiates and sadly killed himself. Oh, boy. Yeah, wow. it's, no, it's a tragic story, but it's fun watching him beat the shit out of people out on the ice. So I came today from eBay. I'm still getting shit on eBay. So. That's nice. Wow. Very nice. Wow. How long ago did he kill himself? Uh, I should have done more research on him <laughs> since I'm wearing his fucking jersey. Do you know, how, know. Do you know how he did it? Yeah, I think he just overdosed on uh, pills. Okay. All right. There you go. Yep. All right. What else is going on, William? I just... Theo, uh, I have to ask you, did I... I can't remember our last interaction. Did I make something up that I owe you $20,000? Because we have to... We have to squash this beef up here because I swear to God, I got swatted literally yesterday. The whole SWAT team came to our little apartment. People are literally after me, Theo, thinking that I owe you money. We have to squash the beef now. I'm not even kidding. We have to. Yeah, I feel you, dude. I don't think this is the time really to discuss it, first of all. And second of all, um, you know how I feel about it. Okay, well, I'm sorry I owe you that 20 fucking thousand dollars, dude. Wait, what? Why? So am I, guy. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to pay you back. What? what then happened? do that. Okay, I regret bringing it up again. I thought you were going to... What happened? Why, huh? why does he... He owes the guy the, the money. The, he owes it. Yeah, no, it's... He owes it, boy. He'll fucking pay 20, it. 20000 I thought you were going to try to tell... Uh, literally, I'm getting messages from people, people... It's really bad. You have to tell people that I paid you back. I'm gonna pay you back. Yeah, I'll tell them when it's done. That's how things work. That's how time works. You have to pay them. You make that on Cameo in like a day. Who said yeah? That what guy piece of shit knows. said yeah? That guy knows. That's the beta guy that's banging the chick that uh, did something earlier. I can't remember. Looks like a real faggot down there. Oh, right there. shit. Oh, my goodness. I've never heard young Santa Claus use those words before. This is incredible. I'm totally kidding. Okay, Theo, I regret bringing it up. 
Okay, I thought you were going to tell the people that I paid you back already, but you're not going to tell them? No, I'm not going to say that. Okay. Is there any other way that you can perhaps, uh, you know, pay a debt to Theo? Nope. <laughs> so literally just the cash. Theo wants 20000 in buddy. a gym bag. No, Jesus no, Christ. No. There's some guy over there that really wants to see William's tits. Absolutely incredible. What do, you, what do you have for this guy, William? This guy's saying, show your tits. That's what this guy came up with, this fucking... Uh... Looks Native American. Yeah. He looks like, uh, what's that fucking movie? Momoa or whatever? Uh, oh, Moana. Moana. Yeah. Has anyone ever told you you look like Moana? All the time, I bet. Juicy fruit. So, William, tell us, what else is going on this week? Well, my sciatic nerve is still acting up, so Tony, you're not gonna like hearing this, but I just downloaded Diablo 4 a couple days ago. I'm already at a 47 Necromancer, level 47 Necromancer, so I have really been hitting it hard. And yeah, my sciatic nerve, I haven't been able to work out in two weeks. It's bad, I'm not feeling good, Tony. So you decided to get a video game? Yes, and I've been playing a bunch, and I was really, Hoping Theo was gonna help me squash this thing. I'm gonna get even more messages after all that. I can't believe it. I don't know you. <laughs> so I would do something, I think, but I don't know you. I like you, I think. That's a, that's a pretty. But you're pushing on that. That's a pretty big endorsement. I know you, I think, is one of the nicest things I've ever heard anybody say about William. Well, you might not be getting your money back then. Whoa! I swear to God, ever since I was wondering how you were going to respond to this tonight, <laughs> you might not be getting that 20K back. What? Yeah, dude. After everything, I thought we had talked earlier and you said you were going to say that I paid you back, but I now you're say, not going with it. I don't know you, sir. And you were playing a video game or something all the time while well, I need some money. Yep. Okay, well, you're not getting it back. Okay. I'll oh. give you another $2,000 to oh. never ask me about it again. Okay. 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 Wow. Okay. So now you only owe him $18,000. Yeah, $18, That's incredible. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Absolutely amazing. How do you plan on repaying him? What are some side gigs that you're going to do to... Uh... Great question. Yeah. Well, I wasn't kidding when I said I started working at a vet's office. I'm getting 18 an hour, so I should be able to pay you back in a year or so. Okay. So let's make it a year from today. I'll pay you back. Oh, God. One year from today. Come on. <laughs> All right. Okay, All a right. year from today, I'll pay you back 18000 okay. Deal. Great. How do we put a ribbon on this thing, William? Anything you're passionate about, perhaps, this week? Anything happened to you or uh, anything going on in your life which might bring a little more energy than uh, what yeah, you have? Yeah, besides right? spending my money on the clothes of deceased pill heads. <laughs> <laughs> this was a $6,000 jersey, Theo. Come on, man. Wait, who the fuck are you, dude? God, seriously, who are you? Yeah. That's Ray Romano's son. Yeah. That is. Uh, it is. It's Parmesan. Parmesan Romano. <laughs> D laughed at that, and he doesn't even know what you look like. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's how good that was. <laughs> he looks like Ray Romano's, yeah, cheesier son. Okay. William. You know that guy. You work with him every week. There's a part where we're in the green room before and after the show. I 100% know you, but I cannot think of your name right now. Oh, my goodness. That is just rude. Oh, shit. It's not, I'm not being mean. Oh, I just shit. cannot, I'm bad with names. I don't I know if you guys recognize that right song. That my is... name's Paul. <laughs> Paul, nice to meet you. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> you, you hear that? Yeah. You... I love my little dog. My little dog. 
I got her a couple months ago now, and now I work where I take her to the hospital. I got a job at the veterinary place. How do you say it? Veterinary or veterinary? You work I'm there. I'm working with the veterinaries. I love my little dog. Yes, I do. Yes, yes I, I do. Theo, uh, I promise you I'll pay you 18000 a year from today. I regret bringing it up. Ladies and gentlemen, make some Thank fucking noise you. for the one and only William Montgomery. This is it. The final episode recorded before the 10-year anniversary. Well, well, well. Uh -oh. We've come to that time, ladies and gentlemen, where, you know, every once in a while, you just have to put a fucking ribbon on things. And who better? And the man who has done more new sets on this show than anybody, more interviews than anybody, more years than anybody. This guy is a superstar. We love him with all of our hearts. You know him. The Big Red Machine, the Memphis Strangler, the Vanilla Gorilla, the one, the only, William Montgomery. Joining the PGA Tour. <laughs> Saudi Arabia just bought the PGA Tour. The good news is there is now a ton more money in golf. The bad news, they get to fly planes into buildings anytime they want. <laughs> and also, weirdly enough, my Indian name is also Little Dick. So that's weird that guy said that. I'm so homophobic, I don't stick a toothbrush anywhere close to my mouth. <laughs> Due to the writer's strike, I'm pitching a new television show starring a fat psychic. It's called Large Medium. <laughs> if y'all want to know a little bit about me, at the end of the day, I side with Jussie Small. Small left, small left. I was kidding, I was kidding. I look like what Jesus would do if the answer was the 12 disciples. Okay. And also, I, uh, I have something I wrote for this. I just want to say it's been a dream to be a part of over 300 episodes of the greatest live po comedy podcast in the world, Kill Tony. There have been lows, namely the quarantine episodes where my drinking and drug use were spiraling totally out of control, where I was flipping over Hyundai Elantras in the parking lot of a La Quinta in Scottsdale, Arizona. And by the way, I killed Tony Chin, so stop looking for him. Um, but there have also been highs. I mean, I finally had sex with Red Band's mom last November. Should have seen that old bitch. <laughs> I got to kiss Tony one night in a hotel room, and I sent Cracker Barrel Kid 55 a very effective and deadly pipe bomb through the USPS. R.I.P. Ted Kaczynski. 
It has been a real pleasure being a part of Kill Tony for the past nearly five years, and I just want to say, this could have been the best podcast of all time, except for Red Band's bitch ass. I mean, how do you have a fucking job? We could have sold out the Astrodome if it weren't for your ass. At the end of the day, Tony, I owe you so much. My life wouldn't be the same. And Red Band, I know I give you a lot of shit and like to make fun, but the truth is you're no doubt, hands down, a national embarrassment. <laughs> Truly the worst part of this show. And Tony talks about firing you at least once a week. No, I kidding. I love you, Red Band. Okay, that's my time. Come on. What a fucking performance. Talk about taking the ball and running with it. A whole fucking speech. Come on, people. The Big Red Machine, William Montgomery, with the fucking blatant performance of the night. Of course, the veteran doing it every week, making it look fresh and new and fucking keeping us on the edge of our seats. First off, dude, stop looking at my dick, dude. <laughs> But yeah, what, Tony? I'm sorry. It's what been throwing you? me off. <laughs> God, you are a force of nature in your element. Are you wearing that because Live Golf and PGA merged this week? Yes, I went to a sex store and I browsed around very awkwardly for a couple hours in the sex store. And this whole ensemble actually cost me 600 fucking dollars, so... I don't give a shit no more! <laughs> and also, Tony, they found skin cancer on my neck, so hopefully I can... That wasn't a joke, yeah, so hopefully it'll be all right. Little fun fact, that part's actually not a joke. He was diagnosed with skin cancer this week, everybody. How about a hand for William Montgomery? You better sit down, bitch! You're not supposed to cheer at that. William, I was not expecting you to prepare something so beautiful as your set was tonight, but uh, we prepared something very special for you. If you want to, uh, if you want to turn around and look at that video screen, let's roll that uh, William Montgomery video. It's William Montgomery, and he's coming for everybody's jobs. That's that guy. <laughs> that guy is a. a Genius. He's like Andy Kaufman meets a fucking Tennessee trucker. He's coming for every, everybody's going to know who that guy is eventually. He's literally got like that, uh, that comedy twitch muscle where he just riffs and it's the dumbest shit and the most glorious shit at the same time. <laughs> All right. We've had this young man on this show before and uh, at least I believe so. I know for a fact that I met him outside one day and I thought he was interesting as hell and had an unbelievable charisma to him. Very impressive. I can't tell whether he's a genius or he's crazy. So here he is for you, ladies and gentlemen, William Montgomery. I just spent 30 fucking dollars on the ecstasy. The least you can do is buy the movie tickets. It was an impression of my uncle in 94 before we went to go see the movie Twister. <laughs> I'm grinding away at the open mics. I'll be quite frank, I have this issue with PCP, so... <laughs> Half the time I'm at the open mics, the other half the time I'm down in Scottsdale, Arizona with my aunt, flipping over Hyundai Elantras, y'all. <laughs> what? <laughs> if you had to guess how many Elantras you flipped in your life, like, what would that number be? I don't have to guess. It's 14. <laughs> <laughs> I met this guy on this show for the first time two weeks ago. Uh, he's fucking awesome. I fell in love with him immediately. I think he's uh, one of the ways of the true future. Maybe I'm crazy, but maybe I'm right. It is the comedy stylings, the second ever appearance of William Montgomery. I opened up this water park outside of Memphis, uh, Wild Water and Wheels. Um, and somebody was going down the slide and, and got killed. <laughs> See what I mean? I don't give a fuck where he started lying, at what part. 
That's fucking comedy. You know, William has been on the show. How many times do you think it's been now? Four or five, including San Francisco? I would guess five. Would you be interested in being the new regular here on Kill Tony? Yeah! I would love to. Yeah? Well, then, ladies and gentlemen, that makes it official. Your new regular is William Montgomery, everybody. Hell yeah. Boom, there you go. Wow, William Montgomery, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second, what is this? Tony, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> uh, how'd you two uh, meet? It was two years ago. Go. <laughs> We were, we were with with my, my aunt. Bro- aunt melting melting candles, candles. goods. Uh, weirdly enough, last night I was trying to look at the eclipse up in the tree, and I I rolled off the limb I was on and landed on my neck and hurt my neck real bad. So I'm, uh, I'm single, I'm holding out for a black or an oriental. It is David Lucas. Mm. Oh my God. I'm tired of being big and black, you know what I mean? Daylight, come and me one go home. Dude, shut the fuck up. So here we go. Oh, <laughs> where am I? <laughs> William, what are you gonna do with the Hold this is on, David I can't swim. <laughs> I think I am sick with the virus, God. Please help me tonight. Uh, well, y'all will be excited to know I just got actually sponsored by Sun Made Raisin Bread. Whoa. Who wants some? Oh, shit. He's throwing out raisin bread. Here we go. Oh, he's really whipping it. I'll shake my hand. Oh, wow. He's burying the hatchet ah. with the <laughs> I fucking buzzered him! <laughs> I buzzered your dumb ass! You really thought I was trying to bury the fucking hatchet? And the comedy gods are with us. He literally broke the chair when he flinched. He got red, man. You have come to a magical, magical episode as I introduce to you the Montgomerys, Francis and Larry Montgomery, are here, live, in the flesh. The longest standing regular in the history of the show, the man who has done the most one minute sets in the history of the show, this is what he came from. <laughs> Welcome to the show, you guys have both- We been- apologize. <laughs> I'm really glad to see Red Bay. Oh! Oh! Red Band. Whoa! Yeah. Let me see that. She had one of these buzzer things on her. First and foremost, Mom and Papa, I just want to say it was a real pleasure storming the Capitol with y'all last year. We made it all the way inside the Capitol building. Larry, what did you think of this unbelievable performance? I'm going to be perfectly objective and, and tell you that I was awestruck by his comedic talent. Wow. <laughs> wow. He's fucking around! 
But when I he could've... said it, how did, what did it sound like when Ja Rule said that to you? Man, you gonna have to stop! <laughs> Well, thank you for more. bringing it up. Thank you. Right. I yeah, apologize. I, bring it up. I do it to everyone. <laughs> so maybe I need to stop. Yeah. But I never go to stop. <laughs> nice catch, bitch. Holy shit. <laughs> Red Band is so old. I asked him if I should join the union and he said no, join the Confederates. You wrote a song, does it have any words? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he got a dog, got a, got a sweet little dog. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday. second ever. Make some noise for William Montgomery. Here to present him with his award. Make some noise for his parents, Larry and Francis Montgomery. Yeah, baby. Sing it if you know it. Yes. Everybody. We love it. Larry, Francis, William. Uh, Larry, it's your son. Is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, he's wiping it off. He's getting William's germs off of it. Sorry I did that. I just didn't want to catch whatever the hell it is Jared Nathan has. <laughs> I forgot to mention, Larry and Francis were voted Guests of the Year 2022. Uh, William's parents ended up beating everybody out somehow. Tony, uh, I, congratulations Thank to you. you and Red Band for crushing it for 10 years. Thank Seriously. You. Thank you. Uh, and one more thing, I, I want to get serious for a second. Uh, William's mother and I are so proud of uh, William for performing in front of 3,000 people. Thank you. We're, we're so proud of him performing in front of 3,000 people live and millions on the live stream and coming out here looking like a fucking retarded <laughs> sex pervert. I do not look like a sex pervert, Papa! <laughs> William, you are a star. We saw Hans uh, is dealing with being challenged regularly for his regularship. We saw David Lucas retire with dignity, able to do spots anytime he wants. You're the second ever inducted Hall of Fame member of the Kill Tony universe. Uh, Thank you so much. Are you, are you also planning on retiring or are you going to keep uh, performing every week? Tony, I never go stop! Fuck you asking me that for? Thank Excited about my parents being here tonight. If you see them, you'll be able to tell I have my mother's chin and my father's testicles. 
By the way, my dad is always saying, make Germany great again. Papa, what does that mean? The Saudis have taken over the PGA Tour, and they're already changing some rules. Miss a putt on the back nine, ten years in jail, and a thousand lashes. <laughs> Tee your ball in front of the T markers. You know your hand's getting chopped off. <laughs> Accidentally lose your ball out of bounds. Ten thousand migrant workers never see their homes in Somalia again. Don't finish the hole with your same ball. You know your wife getting stoned to death. <laughs> Donald Trump will appear in a federal court next Monday after being accused of illegally hoarding classified documents. When asked about the felony charges, Trump responded, the only person who should be getting felony charges right now is Aphex Twin for performing live for the first time this past weekend in Denmark and not America. Apex Twin! Apex Twin! Apex Twin! Apex! Okay, okay. All right, Tell William Montgomery, up. everybody. Unbelievable. Again and again and again. No one brings more energy. No one brings more chaos to the show than you. Absolutely amazing. How do you feel? I feel pretty good, but Tony, tonight, I actually could have found out today, but I missed the phone call. Tomorrow, I find out if I actually have skin cancer, so I thought I would kind of lighten the mood up uh, tonight, so I brought a little friend. Y'all are going to have to be really quiet, though. I want to show y'all my sweet little friend I brought tonight. Let me. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that is incredible. It really is a sweet little dog. So all the pieces of shit on fucking YouTube and Reddit, suck my dick! Because this is a sweet little dog! That is a sweet little dog. She's already shit yes, twice on me, is. so I hope she oh, doesn't. Wow. Yeah, she looks scared to death right now. It's yeah, I think this was a bad idea. I almost <laughs> feel a little bad. She also doesn't like Hispanic people, so it doesn't help that Pablo Escobar is sitting in the front oh. row. <laughs> but yeah, it's exciting uh, to be here. She's scared as shit. But yeah, I thought I would just bring her up. Does she always shake like that? She doesn't. She's just really scared right now. But Wow. It's okay. Oh my goodness. The dog is a definitely a sweet little dog. Does she like being in that uh, bag? <laughs> Who said no, you is, fucking are, stupid bitch? I see it was you. <laughs> she loves being in this bag, dude! <laughs> she actually lives in this bag, bitch, so... Ever since I brought her home from the vet. Yeah, she's just been living in here, and she's my sweet little girlfriend, and I really love her. Oh, my goodness. Oh, she looks like she's in. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, my God, he's licking the dog. I'm her mama. Oh, how I'm sweet I'm her sweet that. mama. Are you in on that angle, Christy? I mean, this thing is unfucking believable. She loves it when I yeah. look around like I'm her get, mom. Get all the way in there, Christy. Don't these people don't need to see anything. Get on in there. Look at this fucking thing. What kind of dog is? Is that a gerbil? It's a no. It's a Rottweiler. She's gonna get a lot bigger. <laughs> that is uh, not a goddamn Rottweiler. This is a Rottweiler, Ali. Yeah, this is a Rottweiler. <laughs> That I don't get it. Is, What's so funny? That it's dog a, is scared to fucking death. The people on Craigslist told me it's a little baby Rottweiler, <laughs> so that's why she cost ten thousand dollars. They said it's a really it's weird a kind of Rottweiler, so it's a fucking miniature Rottweiler. Like, yeah. That's crazy. Honestly, the shaking is increasing to a point that I'm getting kind of concerned. Uh, like a, yeah, like a fairy. If, if, if this dog dies to end the show, I'm. <laughs> Good. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. The lady thinks I have cancer, so hopefully it's not too bad. Why is that funny? I'm not kidding. Why is that funny? 
By the way, I know that he has lied and joked about a great many things uh, on the show, but this one is real. If you look, he has a Band-Aid on the back of his neck. Come on, show him the Band-Aid. They cut it off. I had to get three shots because redheaded people... Uh See that band something with redheaded people. This is know. real. He actually <laughs> does have the. Dog. Why was that funny, Red Band? Hold on, excuse me, Tony. What nah. the fuck? Yeah, that's not gonna lead okay, anywhere. Okay. But the doctor that removed the thing off of your neck, you said that she was pretty positive that it was cancer. Correct. Correct. Can you describe what she said that made you feel that way? Uh, she said, yeah, it looks like you have skin cancer. Don't worry. It's the kind that you want. And I just look at her and I'm like, bitch, what the fuck? I don't want any kind of skin cancer. So I don't know why you said that, but she seemed all right about it. So we'll see. I love it. I love it. And we find out tomorrow. Find out tomorrow. So on next week's episode, we're going to find out if you have to have more serious operations or not. Yes, we'll see if I have a couple months to live or not. And right. if I do, y'all are going to see me back on that cocaine. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. The Pablo Escobars in the room are very excited right now. William, I'm pretty sure your dog is slowly dying. So I'm going to end this interview. Uh, maybe we should maybe we should end it with one little song about the dog, huh? Yeah. You want to lead everybody in it? I got a sweet little dog yesterday, yesterday. I got a sweet little dog yesterday, yesterday. Hold on, why aren't you singing, you dumbass? Little dog yesterday. Yesterday, I got a sweet little dog. Yesterday, yesterday, I got a sweet little dog. Yesterday, there he goes, everybody. The great William Montgomery, everyone. We did it. A ridiculously long episode of Kill Tony for those of you that uh, like complaining about episodes being short. Shouts out to all my boys in Jamaica for the happy Juneteenth. I think the worst thing that ever happened to me was when I met my haters at age three. <laughs> a submarine that takes tourists deep into the ocean took uh, to look at the Titanic wreckage is missing. The last time five tourists got lost in something that deep, Red Band's mom was screaming, what in a time, what in a time. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about becoming a Titanic truther. You mean you couldn't avoid an iceberg in an ocean that big? (laughs) An Arizona man was mauled to death by a bear in an unprovoked attack. Wait, unprovoked? That dumbass walked up right to a motherfucking wild bear! (laughs) Okay, (laughs) that's all I got. Unbelievable. 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 The man is in pure fighting shape. Always makes it, never misses, again and again and again. The Titanic truther joke, perhaps being my favorite joke of the night tonight. Your delivery, your style, your energy, you've never been stronger. We found you when you were a bloated, obese mess. And no- I remember, I still get the memories on my Instagram sometime of years ago, and it's a bunch of me listening to the old back, just zooming in on inanimate objects at four in the morning. Yeah, it makes me feel weird, but luckily, I think we're past that, Trevor, I think. <laughs> what did you mean when you said that you met all your haters when you were three? Uh, when I was three, I actually went to a place called Silver Springs outside of Gainesville, Florida, and I went up there to get the snake wrapped around my neck, and the guy was like, where are you from? And I kept on saying America, and then everybody was laughing, and I didn't understand why, and he kept on asking me where I was from, and I kept on saying America, and there were a couple fucking haters 
out in the crowd, and I remember looking at him just thinking, I am from America. I don't get it. So it's pretty much that, just at Silver Springs. If y'all are ever outside of Gainesville, Florida, visit Silver Springs. They have a really great glass bottom boat. And Tony, I'm glad you asked me about that. I actually have a new sponsor tonight, Silver Springs Theme Park outside of Gainesville, Florida. Wow. Tony, you know what I love about William? Yeah. Is that he's he's sober now, and he's still weird as fuck. Like yeah. I, I, when he came out here, because I came out here way after these two, when he came out here and I heard he got sober and lost all his weight, I was like, oh, William is going to be fucking normal now. No, this motherfucker, some. This is him off cocaine. Y'all understand that? Yeah. There's a certain amazing uh, group of comedians that get sober and they stay weird. Yeah. You know, it is incredible. There's an all-star lineup. You, Theo, right? Tim Dillon. Who Still. else? I think uh, Gallagher. He famously got sober. The guy who did all the watermelon stuff. I mean, he was really bad off on crystal meth. But indeed. Indeed. John yeah, Mulaney. It's great that you mentioned yeah, Gallagher. John Mulaney has a really bad crystal meth problem, too. Yeah, I think he got who uh, Sinbad, I think, had a really bad crystal meth problem as well. He got sober. He was still weird. Sh you shout out to Gallagher, who uh, smashed more watermelons than anybody on Juneteenth ever has. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Gallagher! <laughs> Wait, that wasn't as good. Happy Juneteenth! So Juneteenth is a Jamaican holiday to you? Yes, I think it is. That's the little I did a little bit of research earlier. I think it started out in Jamaica. Where did you do this research at exactly? Where, uh, where? It's on uh, Mad Magazine. I've been reading a bunch <laughs> of Mad Magazines. There was an article... Alfred E. Newman's still going strong, but yeah, I read it in Mad Magazine. I love it. How much is the Silver Springs Amusement Park paying you? Is that what it's called? Yes, yeah, Silver Springs Amusement Park right outside of Gainesville, Florida, down in... Uh, <laughs> How much are they paying you each time you say that? Each time I say Silver Springs Amusement Park outside of Gainesville, Florida, it's $1,000. So wow. Wow. Please go to Silver Springs Amusement Park outside of Gainesville, Florida. Can you describe it to us? So there's some rides or anything that people should check out. Yeah, there's a glass bottom boat. You can actually, when I went with my family, they it's a boat with literally a glass bottom so you can look down into the springs. When I went with my family, I think in the early 90s, we actually saw a bloated corpse down there. So they had to close down the amusement park. Yeah, it was like this Hispanic guy, I think. He got super bloated. He was, I guess, doing some scuba diving stuff down in the springs. And, yeah, we saw him, and I was asking my dad what was going on, and my dad refused to tell me, and it turned into a thing. And then that piece of shit literally put a snake around my neck, Tony, and he was asking me where I was from, and I kept on saying America, and I didn't understand why everybody was laughing at me. That, thi it, <laughs> <laughs> that thing that you do sometimes where you get really loud and it sounds kind of like urban, unlike the way that you normally speak. It sounds kind of, uh, what would the word be? It's a Waikiki beat! <laughs> where do you yeah, he screams like James Brown. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah. You do. Where do you think that comes from? Where, where did that start? We had a really sweet lady that used to help out my parents, uh, an African-American lady growing up, and her she, name was Emma Jean, and she kind of got me talking like that from oh, an early age. Okay. What was Emma Jean, what kind of help was she providing exactly when you say she was helping? Uh, folding towels, doing the bedding, doing the dog walking, making the meals. It did, I'm trying to figure out what my parents were actually doing back then. I mean, <laughs> Emma Jean was doing everything! <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm trying to run and run and figure out what the fuck they were you know, doing. I love, I love how when William's just talking, he sounds like somebody that can't cook, and when he screams, he sounds like somebody that knows every recipe. That is true. How long was Emma Jean in your life? How is she still with your parents? She is not. She sadly got in a. There's actually a lot of quicksand outside of Memphis, and she. <laughs> Went out for a swim one day and the quicksand got her. A lot of people are these days, they're like, oh, quicksand, I'm never around quicksand. It's really not that deadly. Well, I can tell you firsthand, quicksand is deadly as shit. If you ever 
or around it, don't get in it, because it'll suck you under. That's what happened to Emma Jean. Wow. That is unbelievable. <laughs> William, is there anything else we need to know about? Another unbelievable performance? It's, in fact, a basal cell carcinoma that I have on my fucking neck. I have to get it lasered off this Wednesday. So, so this Wednesday, you're going under the laser. Yes, going we under the laser. We know it's not an uncle laser, because we're not going to see him for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Remember that earlier? when he Remember that? Okay. Yeah, got to go under the laser. Hopefully it'll be all right. Also, for anybody who watched last week's episode and was thinking maybe that was dog abuse, bringing Gator out here. She was shaking really bad. I'm happy to report she actually got drunk as shit in Mitzi's <laughs> after the show. She was taking a tequila shot. She was taking Jager shot. Jager shot. She was doing vodka shot. Is this that weirdo y'all were talking you about? You spotted What's him. Fucking problem, you dude. You spotted him. That's incredible. He really stands out in the pile. He's, you could tell because he's the only one that has no emotion on his face he's, whatsoever. He's the guy from TikTok that likes the trains. Have you ever seen him? Oh yeah. Oh my That's gosh, Mister <laughs> Mister Roberts. Is that your TikTok handle? I'm kidding, you bitch. I don't know who the fuck. <laughs> So you were saying that the dog that was in question of animal cruelty last week because it was shaking profusely, this sweet little dog that you bought, um, that all is well because it was doing shots of liquor afterwards? Yeah, she's, uh, what, eight weeks old, nine weeks old now, so I'm thinking I can't drink, but my loved ones are sure as shit going to be drinking, so I got her drinking Pretty early on, I'm just a little worried. She's such a small little dog. I'm worried about the size of her liquor. I'm worried about the size of her kidneys. I don't know if it's a sustainable thing, but she's having fun. I'm having fun. We all having fun. William Montgomery, we absolutely love you. Another unbelievable okay. performance. Get, get, a, get him on Cameo. There's only one person that could possibly put a ribbon on a show like this. Barack Obama. That is correct. Former president of the United States. Anyway, he's the Memphis Strangler, the Vanilla Gorilla, the Big Red Machine, the Bee's Knees, if you will. Put your hands together for the great, the powerful William Montgomery, everybody. First, first off, uh, Tony, are you really Mexican? <laughs> hey, table of contents, wrap it up already. I'm trying to start reading over here. <laughs> Nothing worse than opening a book and having to skip past the pages that say dedicated to Mumsy and Pop. <laughs> you don't hear me starting a set announcing the name of my agent and my tax accountant. Get to the good shit, you pompous authors. <laughs> If I wanted to read about who you owe everything to, I'd read you over your obituary. <laughs> I'm sick of this shit. Okay, let's get on to the next one. Uh, <laughs> I heard somebody say the other day that they felt like Schindler's List was too long, which sounds a little anti-Semitic because I feel that list could have been way longer, like seven million people longer. <laughs> I was literally sitting in front of a rock climbing gym earlier and a one-armed girl walked out and I couldn't help but wonder, Red Band, what's your excuse? <laughs> and that's not a fucking joke. <laughs> that literally happened earlier. Okay, that's my time. Wow. Wow. The more sets than anyone ever in the history of the show. And meanwhile, you know, while writing a new minute every single week, somehow to me, that seven million people Schindler's List joke is the joke of the night, without a doubt. Coming in Thank and you. showing what a veteran of stand-up comedy is like. That is, an, that is a joke that can work all the time. Thank you. I know. That can be a new one that I start using on the longer sets. Totally agree. Yep. It's in the mix. 
What the fuck was that funny for? Seriously, why was that funny? <laughs> they all know. Yeah. They know. They know. What's the band-aid in your, in the back of your neck? Do you what? It's the cancer. I actually got it lasered <laughs> and burned off last Wednesday. So hopefully I got a little more longer. Yeah, I had can- skin cancer. Oh, wow. Yep. Uh, but yeah, actually, Tony, I got a new tattoo on my leg. I would love to show you. It's kind of in honor of the getting the cancer off my neck. So, okay. Do you want to see my new leg tattoo? Uh, oh, that, oh wow! He's taking his belt off. I have no interest. Oh, this is very interesting. His belt is coming off, everybody. First time he's oh my god. Pants. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, uh, I got like a Speedy Gonzalez. If y'all can see right here, I got a, uh, it's a Speedy Gonzalez wearing a, he has a piece of cheese. Um, but yeah, Tony, do you like it? I mean, let me see it. It's what the fuck away. is going on? I mean, I just had fucking cancer, and now I'm trying to show y'all a new fucking tattoo. What the fuck is going on? Wow. This is... What are the rules on YouTube? Do we have to... Do we have to write them like a handwritten letter? No, like, it's, hey, it's, this is a we, we promise. It's, <laughs> it's, You're going to see some stuff later in the episode. It's not big enough. We don't have to... William. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> Tony, I actually have some really big news. I'm, uh, I'm starting a new Etsy shop. <laughs> Penises by William. It's 80 fucking dollars. I mean, you go to uh, like a Christmas dinner or something, and you're trying to break the ice. <laughs> so Get weird. one of these penises by William. You can just say you just got a new leg tattoo. You can. This is incredible. Using the extra pocket of his... Brought to you by Sheath Underwear. Sheath that pocket underwear. really holds in those fake dicks. Yeah, yeah, you can walk in like Uncle Lance, Aunt Mary. It's so nice to be here. I have this actually really weird itch on my, on my upper thigh. Let me show you all real quick. And then... <laughs> D-Madness is blind and somehow he knows what's... Oh, my God, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Here, hold on, let's do it from behind! No, Ari, this was actually my real penis. <laughs> I knew I would trick your ass up here! That's my real dick, dude! <laughs> No, but we make them really good. I have a new Etsy shop. It's really called Penises by William. They're $75. Wow. I mean, did you mold it? Like, is that your real dick? Huh? Did you mold it out Dude, your... don't fuck with me right now, bitch! I just said Ari sucked my dick. Don't fuck with me now, bitch! Wow, this is... <laughs> An incredible moment in the history of Kill Tony. The first ever exposed penis. The first ever uh, man-on-man blowjob. That was exciting. That was very sweet of you, Ari. Thank you. I love a... <laughs> actually, Tony, I don't know if you remember, Ari was actually the first person to expose his penis on Kill Tony live on YouTube. I remember <laughs> that. That is correct. <laughs> I didn't know it was live back then. Yeah. yeah. That was. We're not live anymore. Yeah, that was one of, one of the flags we got. Yeah. That thing is absolutely incredible. Pri- I can't stop staring flag. at it, William. I must be honest. The fact that it's... I know. It looks a little bit like... I'll be honest. Mine's a little smaller than this. But it looks kind of similar. The coloring is pretty similar. But I can make them for you like this. I mean, I had to test a bunch of different dyes, a bunch of different colors. I mean, you just send me a picture of your actual penis, and I'm going to be able to mold a one that looks pretty much just like it. I've already made three for Red Band's fucking dumbass. 
What do you what do you make these penises out of exactly? Can you to get describe the process? Yeah, for us? it's like a silicon base. I use a decent amount of lycra. It's like a it's a mix of probably sixty percent silicon, thirty uh, percent lycra, and then I just have molds. I make molds. This is actually after my cousin. Uh, <laughs> My cousin Robert gave me a mold of his penis, so this is actually my cousin Robert's penis. But yeah, I have all different kinds of molds, and yeah, I just have the, it's 30% lycra, 70% silicon, and you mix it together, you have to heat it up for 20, 30 minutes, and then it ends up, you can get the right. And then you shape it yourself with your own bare hands? Yeah, I put it in the mold, there's a mold. Uh. Yeah, cousin Robert was really sweet, he let me put my mold on his thing, and... (laughs) <laughs> Didn't ask too many questions. You you apply the mold with your hands? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Directly on your co- cousin Robert's penis. Yeah, and, it was a couple balls. of weeks. There's also balls attached to that, Yes. Right? Are those his balls too? Yeah. Can you mix balls with different person's dick? Yeah, for sure. Like nice. Red Band has really small balls. He has these sweet... I'm kidding. I actually do. I have really tiny balls, but Ari has probably the biggest balls in the whole I entire the world. balls. Maybe... I could, after this, maybe mold Yeah, I think it's time. It's that time. It's going to be a lot of... going to be a lot of editing this episode. Make sure you get the... It's just disgusting, guys. Another pair of sheath underwear. Take note that we all wear sheath underwear. Oh, my God. That is absolutely incredible. This is Kill Tony, the number one live podcast in the world. Oh, they're touching balls! Oh, no! Oh, no! (laughs) Make some fucking noise for William Montgomery, ladies and gentlemen! Check him out on Cameo. Make some noise. Wait, wait, wait. I want to tell you something. Yeah. Hold on. Have it hold on. Before the chest drop. Give me one second, waiter. I was in uh, Romania. I was on a European tour, the wrong side of history tour. I was in Romania, and I was at an underground post-punk rock club. And he was asking me about American comedy. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty great. He goes, I'd love to bring some of those guys over here. I'm like, well, who's your favorite? Who do you want to bring over here? He goes, really only one guy. Oh, wow. William Montgomery. (laughs) They want to book you, dude. They want to book you at Control Club in Bucharest, Romania. They want you there. Well, I never get a step foot in Romania. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Cool, sounds good. <laughs> Make some noise one more time for William Montgomery. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, your final comedian of the ni- of the night has the all-time record for appearances on Kill Tony, the all-time record for most new minutes. He is the only living member of the Kill Tony Hall of Fame. Make some noise for the Memphis Strangler, the Big Red Machine, the Vanilla Gorilla, William Montgomery, everybody! First off, first off holy shit, that dude's poem sucks. <laughs> Okay, since it's uh, July 4th tomorrow, I'd like to just do the Pledge of Allegiance, so here. (laughs) I pledge allegiance to Red Band's mom, even if I can't always get a hold of her. And on that night when we had sex at Denny's under a table intoxicated with liberty and justice for all. It took me like five hours comparing it with the actual fucking Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. (laughs) Make sure your Uber driver is obese because you know his ass got the AC cranked up. (laughs) And it's been hot as shit. Former NFL quarterback Ryan Mallett drowned in Panama City Beach after being pulled out into the ocean by a riptide. And this whole time, I thought he told other people to go deep. (laughs) 
The Supreme Court just ended affirmative action, with re which really sucks because I was so close to playing in the NBA. <laughs> Y'all know I was going to be playing for the Dallas Mavericks. I love Mark Cuban. Okay, that's my time. The great, the powerful, the big red machine, William Lights Out Montgomery. How do you feel about that set, William? Felt pretty good, but Tony, all I honestly can feel right now is I have the worst hemorrhoid. I swear to God, it's like the size of a golf ball. In my butthole, I spread my cheeks earlier in the mirror in the bathroom finally to just see what I was working with, and I swear to God, it looked just like an open predator's mouth. Oh. My butthole, yeah, I mean, it, was, it looked like I have two buttholes. Anybody else got two buttholes out in the crew? Whoa. Okay, wow. a couple of people. Yeah, it looked just like I had two buttholes. But yeah, I swear to God, Tony, it looks like the predator's mouth. I don't know what the predator's mouth looks like. It's like, picture, I'm spreading it apart, and it kind of ends up, it looks like a... Swollen like vagina a, or something like that. No, I see it more like a trapezoid, kind of. Yeah. It looks like two triangle. It looks like an hourglass, kind of, because the... Just get a sewing needle. Oh... Tony, why is he he's still on the fucking show? <laughs> Seriously, what's going on? He's a ratings disaster. Did you see how he's fucking creepy with that bitch? He was just up here. I mean, he's creepy with all the bitches, dude. Ooh, you he's are... going to get in fucking trouble. <laughs> no, I have some inside information. He's literally going to get in trouble soon. <laughs> Creepy with all the bitches, William has said here. Yeah, I have the receipts. This is a really weird deal. I mean, he was talking. I'm, I'm not going to get into it. All right. He will describe I, what his butthole looks like, but he will not give out the info on red band. He will talk about his brown band, but not his sweet red band. Don't call out your mom right now, dude. Oh, my goodness. Huh? Wow. Literally, the only thing I can feel is that thing in my butthole right now, and you're really coming at me like that, you piece of so, shit. So, hold on. Let's, st let's stop the red band thing for a second here. Let's get back to this. Is this real, this thing in your butthole, or is this it's one? It's real. It came out again. I didn't shit for two days, and then when I did, it fucking, it happened. I don't know what's going on. I've been putting extra fiber in my, in my midnight oats. What's it called? Midnight oats? No, overnight oats. I've been... <laughs> midnight oats. <laughs> Not midnight oats. <laughs> I've been burning the midnight oats. <laughs> yeah. No, my overnight oats, we, I've been putting a bunch of fiber in there, but it's not working, Tony. I'm backed up right now. What I wrote is, a... I don't even understand. Who are you voting for? I know. <laughs> you know... Oh, small talk. Yeah. I, I, RFK! R <laughs> wow. A lot of chance. A lot of chance here tonight. How, how do you have you had a uh, hemorrhoid before? Yes, I had a had one or two this past yeah. year. My goodness! I wrote you a poem about it. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Fuck off. <laughs> Roses Talk are red. Talk to Red Band that way. Apologize. What me? Fuck off! What the fuck are you? <laughs> Apologize to Mr. Red Band. I literally have something the size of a golf ball in my asshole right now. Don't come at me, you piece of shit. <laughs> William gets a little feisty with the guests sometimes. This I is know. a famous thing. Con William, can, we, can you show us the hemorrhoid? Is that acceptable? Or blur, we'll blur it out. Do you want to see it? I was, I, I was actually showing people earlier. I posted it on Instagram, but Instagram took the post down. Oh. Wow. Yeah, it was just a Violated bubble. community guidelines? Community guidelines. That's what they hit me with. Oh, my goodness. Wow. This is incredible. So what does a, how does a hemorrhoid, uh, what do you have to do now? You just wait it out? I don't know anything about this. Yeah, I'm waiting it out. It was getting better, and then I ate a couple of boxes of macaroni and cheese the other night. Kraft brand. Really? Oh, yeah. I yeah, and then I think that is what stopped me up. But yeah, I mean, it got better, and now it's worse again. You ate two boxes of macaroni and cheese in one sitting? Yes, I've been doing a bunch of sit-ups. I've started doing a bunch of sit-ups recently, and they just make me so hungry. So I'm so you did a bunch of sit-ups, and then you ate two boxes of Kraft macaroni two and cheese. Two boxes of Kraft, and I started of... making my midnight. Oh. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I... 
I think that was a movie we did one time. It was, Didn't we yeah. work on what Midnight Oats? What was Midnight Oats about, Adam? <laughs> can can, it, can we get it. some? Can we get some cinematic uh, music? Uh, he's got it. Yeah, he's got that. I think that was actually the thing about Red Band kind of hitting on these fifteen-year-old girls on the internet. <laughs> All right, William. Adam is going to describe the movie that uh, this summer. One man, one hemorrhoid, two boxes of Kraft mac and cheese. I'm hungry tonight. (laughs) He had worked up the appetite of a lifetime doing 16 (laughs) sit-ups. Made it to 16, trying to get to 20 next week. He had a goal to play for Mark Cuban and the Dallas Mavericks. But that could only be achieved if he could get his midnight oats ready before 6 a.m. It's impossible. I make them at 8 a.m. Piece of shit. (laughs) He had a hemorrhoid the size of Red Band's search history in his asshole. (laughs) And there was only one way to get it out. The jaws of life. He called his gay friend Brad the jaws of life. He literally sucked out my last hemorrhoid. This film has not yet been rated. <laughs> Charlize Theron, Ben Kingsley, and introducing fucking... Tilda Swinton. <laughs> as the Jaws of Life. Featuring Robin Williams. <laughs> oh my God. As Tilda Swinton. Robin Williams as Tilda Swinton. <laughs> And Hans Kim as the Asian neighbor who couldn't believe the size of that hemorrhoid. (laughs) He couldn't believe it the night he saw it through the mirror. Yeah, but what did Hans Kim say when he saw the hemorrhoid, William? Holy shit! (laughs) That's a big-ass hemorrhoid! (laughs) Tony, who does the black voices from earlier, is going to do the voice of Hans Kim in this movie. You know I'm going to do Oscar's vote. (laughs) (laughs) William Montgomery stars in... Midnight. (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea. I have no idea how this show is so successful. It blows my mind. I I was hoping we could call (laughs) Justin back and get him to do a Tilda Swinton impression. (laughs) All right, that was great. Come on, man. I'm half asleep right now. (laughs) 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 Who the fuck is Tilda Swinton? (laughs) William, you are... I don't know how you do it every week, but you keep uh, filling our souls with your sweet, sweet midnight oats. And... um, it's a pleasure to seriously pl- pray for my hemorrhoid, though. I'm not kidding. I'm currently squeezing my butt cheeks right now. It makes the weirdest Don't feeling. make it sweat. I'll show you after the show, Tony. I actually to... do want it's to It's crazy it. looking. I swear to God, it looks like I have two buttholes right now. Wow. I don't know if I do. You sure it's not a tumor? Huh? Oh, he just <laughs> had cancer. <laughs> Did you not know I just literally had skin cancer cut off my fucking neck? <laughs> <laughs> he really yeah, did. It's terminal. Ter- <laughs> In addition, three weeks. <laughs> three weeks. Three weeks to live from. To live. <laughs> How does that make you? Three feel? weeks. <laughs> <laughs> they gave you three weeks to live with skin cancer. Three weeks to live. <laughs> they told you told me last week that they took it off. Yeah, they took it off, but what they found didn't look good. It's terminal. Three weeks to live. Three weeks to live, You Tony. seem totally fine. I've been making my peace. <laughs> Slowly but surely, I've been making my midnight oats, making my peace. I've been calling people on the phone. Who have you been calling? My old gym teacher, Coach Rogers. I mean, Coach Rogers and I used to fucking beat people up in the locker room. So, yeah, Coach Rogers. I mean, he was the first person I called. This is incredible to find out that you have three weeks to live. You were the first. Uh, um, uh, it's sad, Tony. 
Hey, if Coach Rogers on the line, he has something he wants to say. Uh, hey, hey, Will, this is Coach Rogers. I'm in the middle of the big game. What's happening? You're not eating mac and cheese with that big hemorrhoid, are you? Coach, I am, and Coach Rogers, I know we haven't spoken in a while, but... Y yeah, well, you hit me up on Facebook Messenger from time to time. Sorry, I don't respond. Man, that wasn't me. <laughs> My <No>. bad. <laughs> I have th I I don't have a good diagnosis. I mean, it was a it's a hard. I have three weeks left to live. Sorry, it's a, man, you dumbass. Sorry, it's a seventh he inning was a stretch. It's football, coach, idiot. That's baseball shit. Sorry, it's baseball football. Wait, what's going on? What diagnosis? What are you talking about? I'm in a bowling alley. You're in a who? A bowling alley. I'm I can't hear you. We're playing station. boxing now. We're playing. Boxing. Sorry, I work I work at a YMCA. I should have mentioned that. You still work at the YMCA, Coach? Yeah, it's been a tough year. I got COVID. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting my ass kicked now. <laughs> Fuck you. I have a whistle, Coach. too. Coach. Wait. And I just, someone Coach. put a spell on my tongue. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what's up with your skin cancer? Coach. What? Like three weeks. For, till what? To live. Set. Go! God, what is going 30, 30, 30, on? Here. It's the wave, William. I think he's gonna go. He's in the 20. I'm in a drive-by with Cam. Sorry, one second. Okay, sorry. What's up? Yeah, I have three weeks left to live. Uh, All right, perfect timing. <laughs> I'm gonna die in three weeks. Oh uh, well, nice to hear from you, bud. Yeah, nice Thank to hear from you too. That's a good so, sorry, but there's a horse race happening now. Yeah. I'm at I, Churchill Downs. Come I on. put 60 bucks on William's skin cancer. Shiver me, Timbers. Well, you would have made 120. <laughs> <laughs> you would have made one. Another spell, God damn it. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, I also work at Harry Potter summer camp. <laughs> now there's some owls doing mime. And that was Red Band coming to a YouTube video of a news reporter. <laughs> <laughs> Too much fun. Make some fucking noise for the great William Montgomery, everybody. They found a powdery white substance in the White House recently. At least it was powdery this time, said Bill Clinton. <laughs> Pete Davidson is going back to rehab, stemming from PTSD and depression. I mean, imagine if you had dated Ariana Grande, Kate Beckinsale, Kim Kardashian, Larry David's daughter, Cindy Crawford's daughter, Christina Applegate, Caitlyn Jenner, Chelsea Clinton, Larry David's other daughter, Red Band's mom, Michelle, Fe <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer is Catwoman. You'd be depressed, dude. The more I think about it, the more I have questions about the moon landing. In fact, I'm starting to have my doubts about knots landing. I don't know if y'all remember that movie, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, but yeah, that's what my father told me December 14th, 1992. <laughs> then he handed me a shovel. <laughs> I was five years old. I didn't know what death was. <laughs> okay, that's my time. That's it. <laughs> William Montgomery. Yes, Don Barris. <laughs> what about Red Band's mom? <laughs> that was yeah. shocking. You'd be surprised. She uh, she's quite the topic of conversation. She was in good company show. with all those ladies, though. Yeah, she was. It's a real classy bunch. Um, William, you have a real knack for uh, some outdated references. There was a <laughs> a a not landing joke <laughs> that literally did not land at all. <laughs> Yeah, and not landing, you, the famous spinoff of Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, there's another one. You just did it right there. A Dallas yeah, it's, reference. It's Notch show. Landing is a famous spinoff of Dallas, the famous and you have television. have a new Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead joke. <laughs> uh, have you ever thought about writing movie jokes about recent movies? That are, that are I have thought about it, but it's, been, it's hard, Tony. I it really, is. I don't know. I have mean, you I gone to see any movies recently? Perhaps the new Barbie movie. No, I'm waiting to see the new Barbie movie. You're waiting to see it? What are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting on a... Uh, it's not I'm, out yet, Tony. Oh, <laughs> okay. sure. Yeah, it's not out yet. <laughs> there I am. Mr. How are you not in touch with what's happening in society? <laughs> wow. When, 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 well, all right. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? You know who's killing it? Nicolas Cage. Have you seen any recent Nicolas Cage movies? Yeah, the one where he's storming... Uh, that the prison on the rock. Oh no, that's that's about twenty two years old, William. Um, incredible. Yeah, that's a hell of a movie. I saw that for the first time last week. Amazing, amazing. Can I just say one yeah, thing real quick. Absolutely. She spit in my mouth earlier. <laughs> it's true. She did. She did. And he, he, which means he basically came in his mouth earlier because uh, we heard. I could taste his semen for <laughs> sure. Little. He came in. We know. We got it. We know the order of events. She is so blonde that she's explaining it, everybody. He came in my mouth, and then I spit in his mouth. Yes. Yes, we know. We know the... We have the fucking yarn attached to the faces on the wall. It's like all... We've connected the dots. Just one string. We understand how the cum ended up in Don's mouth. They also have the same size shorts on. I can see both of y'all's it is upper thighs. I can see your pussy a little bit. Incredible. <laughs> those, shorts are, those shorts are so short that I'm beginning to think that perhaps the cum taste that you had, Don, was from her mouth. Maybe he spit some other dude's cum in her mouth earlier. And now... Oh. <laughs> All right. I love it. So uh, what else is going on in life, William Montgomery? So excited. I'm going with Tony to Hawaii this weekend. But, Tony, we're famously not getting our dog vaccinated. And it has been super hard trying to find a kennel to to take her in. I mean, all the fucking kennels around Austin, all your, your dogs have to be fully vaccinated. Or I'm not getting my dog vaccinated. <laughs> Give us some reasons why you don't want to get your dog vaccinated. I mean, I don't know if you've been reading all the news about the dog vaccinations. I mean, it turns some of them gay. I mean, I can't have... I'm not going to have a fucking little lesbian fucking... And for the pieces of shit that were talking online about my little dog being scared, she wasn't scared. Mind your own fucking business. Oh. I can't find a place to keep her in a... Ca I can't find a place. Wait, what were they saying online? We have to that know. The dog looks scared. What's William doing holding a fucking little dog up here? Keep your fucking business to yourself. I'm not interested in it. The little girl loved being up here. By the way, I'm going to start bringing the fucking dog up here every fucking week. And for the people that don't like me playing my synthesizer song, it's about to be a weekly thing, you pieces of shit. You don't like that song? Well, I love that song. It's a bunch of bitches out there talking shit, but yeah, it's... Uh, I love it. You're doubling down. You're gambling on yourself. Are you ever going to stop playing that song? You know, I never going to stop playing that song. But if, if anybody can look after Gator, let me know after the show. We literally have to find somebody to, get, to take her in. Red Band, you would? Oh, wow. Look at that. I'll take care of your dog real good. Oh, shit. Whoa. <laughs> what Some... does that mean? You put your fucking dick by her mouth, yeah, you pervert? <laughs> Wow. Oh. William, I haven't seen you in a while. It's good to see you, man. Yeah, nice to see you, too. <laughs> yeah, Don and William, you guys know each other very well. Don, last time you saw William, he was a completely bloated alcoholic. Um, but, and Don, now, wasn't it fun? I swear to God, every single Monday night on Kill Tony at the Comedy Store, I was always off Tuesday, Wednesday for my self-storage unit job. So I would be at the fucking Comedy Store till 3 in the morning, and Don would famously close the OR 
Do you remember all of our conversations I in there? I certainly do. It was, I'd be talking to you for two hours in there. I don't know yeah. if other people didn't like it, but I oh, was coped had... the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. And to answer yeah. question, nobody else liked it except me and you. Yeah, they really did not. I remember a lot of comedy store employees being like, William was annoying last night. He did this. He did that. But I loved it. So yeah, yeah it was fun. It's nice. Don to loves see you the again. chaos. It is absolutely incredible. William, what else before we let you go? I don't know. I mean, I'm super pumped about that. And also, y'all have to know, Tony told me on Saturday, or maybe I shouldn't even see, say this, but he said it was my best set I've ever had, that which is was true. very sweet. That is coming true. from Tony, and it was. It felt. Other than one time, I, I thought I was having a heart attack. My chest started hurting for about two seconds. During that, my best set I've ever had, I felt as well. My heart literally started hurting, so I thought I was about to die on stage. Well, that might so be that good scared me. That might be good for you because that was the best set you've ever had. I mean, 25 minutes of absolute, absolute crush, fucking fire kill. Everything was wild. William, great, is, uh, William is indeed going with me on this massive theater tour for the rest of the year, August all the way through December. Giant, massive theaters, so we're getting in shape for that. He's going to be on the I... Tony and Friends shows tomorrow, the next day. We're going to Hawaii. Then we have three weeks off, and then 26 cities. Massive theaters. Exciting stuff. Exciting stuff indeed. You're going you're gonna to not retire, right? You're going to keep doing comedy? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure. Hold on, what did you, you say? Are that you to ever me? gonna stop doing comedy? I ain't never gonna stop doing <laughs> unless if I have a heart attack on stage. Well, that's not really a. That's not really a kind of a momentum killer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, really brought the energy to a halt there. The old if I have a heart attack. But I ain't never go have a heart attack. That's so right. <laughs> that is right. I'm never gonna have a heart attack. So. That is true. You are never going to have a heart attack. William, everybody loves you. We love you. Another Why was that funny, bitch? God. I wanted to slap that chick all night. I know what you mean. She has a little bit of an attitude problem. It's because uh, she is waiting for that guy to die. <laughs> is that true? Is this a family here? Yeah, it's a family. Don't let the son start to answer. I don't. I just want to tell the the daughter. You look good. I mean, real good. <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, okay. Thank you to the piece of shit that just threw me at the dude. You're not allowed to do that. I'm gonna kill you right after the show. Someone throw a car at you? What is that? It's a Hot Wheels car. Why would someone throw a Hot Wheel at you? I mean, what the fuck were you thinking, dumbass? Why'd you, why'd you throw the Hot Wheel? Having the set of my life up here right now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. My dad Ladies and gentlemen, uh, one more time for the great and powerful William Montgomery, everybody. <laughs> that is that. And only now, in our final moments, do we realize the true power of the dark side. This battle station is fully operational, and it ends with one big red machine. Ladies and gentlemen, the record holder for sets done, interviews done, all time, the only living member of the Kill Tony Hall of Fame is here, Austin Zone, William Montgomery. to be back from the big island. <laughs> I have to be honest, I'm actually the balding orange-headed man who kidnapped Carly Russell in Alabama last week. She was telling the truth. Don't get mad at her. That's not a joke. I mean, it was me. Imagine thinking to yourself, you know what animal seems the most ninja-like and coming up with turtles? <laughs> That'd be like trying to come up with the perfect protagonist for a video game and going, yeah, let's make him a plumber. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then when that, for no explainable reason, becomes successful, rather than going a different direction, you brainstorm and create a sibling who also happens to be a plumber. <laughs> Genius! Kids love plumbers. Was taxidermists already taken? <laughs> Anybody else think it's weird Master Shredder gets his funding from George Soros? What's going on in the sewers down there? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Wow. I mean... Time after time, somehow... Apparently getting stronger and stronger somehow. It is unbelievable. The man that could come in and, and come in weak, he could come in, he could take a night off and go, oh, I've already done so much. But instead, boom, time after time, laugh after laugh, the volume level, the amount of punchlines, the energy, the excitement, the connection. I mean, look at the way he stares these people directly in the eyes everyone an innocent victim of his look at me bitch you better look at him thank you bitch Jesus and so tony i'm excited uh nicole came up here doing her new merch i actually this is some of my new merch i've made tan peanut characters Say Hawaii, so I'll be selling them after the show as well. Oh, wow. Tan Peanut characters. There's a, it's like the Belize guy. <laughs> Who's this guy? It's unbelievable. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, it looks just like him. Exclusive William Montgomery merch. I love it. How was Hawaii? Tell us about it. We, were, we missed you last week. Yeah, Hawaii was wonderful. I actually, I stayed a little longer because, Tony, I'm, I'm going to be an actor now. They casted me in a uh, remake of Rescue 911. They're going to start doing a Rescue 911 in Hawaii. I'm going to be the driver of the ambulance, so I'm super excited. We already started shooting. I have to go back in a couple weeks, but super excited. It seems like it could be a good opportunity for me. That is so exciting. Uh, so you're the <laughs> ambulance driver for Rescue 911, the old classic show. Yeah, I'm sorry bringing up that reference. I've been working on not doing the older references, Tony. I'm very sorry. I can't. I can't stop doing the. What's funny over there, Redmond? I can't stop doing. What are you doing? Why are you slapping yourself like that? It's some new thing I'm trying. <laughs> Sometimes it makes people laugh. Not all the time. Every time you do it, there's a weird sound. Do it again. Yeah, every now and again, <laughs> it kind of makes a sound. But not all the time, but sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, sometimes I do this. That was too fast. <laughs> And Tony, I have some really good news. My hemorrhoid, it's been about three or four weeks now. It's finally getting better. It's the size... Wow. It's the size of a little grape now. So that's much better than the tennis ball deal I had up there. So it's getting better, Tony. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. You're coming back from Hawaii super refreshed with what seems to be superpowers right now. What else happened out there that thing why do you think you're coming in so strong? I don't know. I actually this time I did get a new tattoo and I'm starting to really feel the powers of the Looney Tunes. I got a foghorn leghorn. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Cost this me five thousand so. dollars. <laughs> wow, why did you pay so much money for it? Um, because I was, I was thinking when I was in Hawaii, the doctors were telling me, don't go because you're skin cancer, but I'm just getting to the point. I think you've been here as well before Matthew Broussard, but just getting to the end of my fucking rope, dude. I think you were that way a couple years ago or something. So we share that in common. Yeah. I was just at the end of my fucking rope. Just do I jump off this build, this fucking building? I think you were in a similar situation like three years ago or something. And you talked me out of it. I did talk him out of it. He was a fucking pussy. I thought he was going to do it. But I'm glad he didn't. What did you say to... What did you... What did you say to him to talk him out of killing himself? Matthew, come on. You know I love you, dude. <laughs> we briefly dated, Tony. I don't know if... 
Matt, you wanted me to say that. But yeah, it was like a lover's quarrel. He almost fucking jumped off. I was like, Matthew, stop, man. You know I love your words. <laughs> Matthew, you know I love your words. <laughs> William's a wild boy. Matthew, is this true that you guys had a lover's quarrel? It was a, a short but a fervorous tryst. Ah. More, uh. more lustful than anything, but I'll never forget. Yeah, I mean, uh, that happened. I was listening to that slut who was up here a couple people ago, and yeah, a couple times I came in about 30 seconds or something, and it was... Okay, let's move All on. All right. Uh, <laughs> very, very interesting. So now that you're back to Austin, Texas, what are your, you have any uh, plans or anything else going on? Sweet little dog, still good? Still doing good. Still kissing her tummy nonstop, all the time. Kissing her tummy with my tongue, by her butt. <laughs> she loves it. I love it. My butt's better. <laughs> what? Luckily, I started putting uh, grape juice on it. The ah. yellow grape juice. Ah, did someone, did a doctor tell you to do that? Dr. Threckled. Dr. Freckle? Dr. Threckled. Threckled. That's your actual doctor? Yeah, Dr. Threckled. What else? Why is that funny, you fucking idiot? I'm bombing up here right now, dumbass! I'm having a real hell of a time up here! I tried to do the gay thing with you. That didn't really work out. And then you're laughing at me like that, you piece of shit. I think you're doing fantastic. Well, thank you, Tony. You guys think William's doing good up here? Why didn't you clap, bitch? I can see everything that's going out there right now. Thank you. Thank you. My goodness. Uh, things are up and up. You're about to go on the tour with me. That starts in two weeks. Very excited. I'm actually driving an hour tomorrow. I'm finally, well, I've started the process. It'll be fine, but I'm finally getting my passport tomorrow. I have to drive an hour away. And then Why I'm are you driving an hour paying away? Paying some guy $500. I went, seriously, did, I went. Didn't uh, I tell you that I have a guy for that? Did it I, might be the same guy. I got him no, from his, somebody else. His office is like three blocks from here. I have to drive an hour. I have to wake up at seven in the morning uh, and drive an hour, but I'm going to be able to get it. This sounds very suspicious. <coughs> this lady's got to go read somebody's fortune right now. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. She looks like a gypsy. <laughs> yes. Indeed. We're a good team. <laughs> we should do a, like a, a, a comedy together sometime. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> um, an hour away for a, a passport. Where did you find this human from? From Nick. Oh, man. Why would you? Wow, you're you know, going to end up... Uh, yeah, gonna we're going to have us. to take somebody else to Canada, I guess. Because huh? that's not going to be... You know, Janice is free. Oh, maybe <laughs> Janice can do it. That would be exciting. I'm going to get it, Tony. Teresa? Who said that? It was that lady right there, the one behind the Belize guy. I'll get the passport, Tony. I swear to God, I'm getting it. It's, again, I have to pay him 500 fucking dollars with a money order, and it's kind of sketchy, but I'll get it. Is there anything else that you want to uh, tell this audience, tell these people that love you so much, or perhaps something uh, passionate from the heart? Again, I will be right out front after the show. Uh, I have these new t-shirts. I'm super excited about it. And just remember, I never go stop loving the cold trend. Oh, yeah. That is true. Never in a million years will I stop loving the cold trend. How loud can this place get for the one and only William Montgomery, everybody? is the Memphis Strangler, the Vanilla Gorilla, the Big Red Machine. This is indeed the one and only William Lights Out Montgomery.
that is Mitch McConnell ordering food at a McDonald's. Um, what the fuck happened to that guy? A homeless woman was just killed at the Gallo Winery when a tractor mowing the grass ran over her sleeping body. The bad news is she will never see her family again. The good news is the winery will soon have an earthy, full-bodied vintage with subtle heads, a brain, and liver. Okay. Leaning Tower of Pisa, you know somebody losing their job. Either that or Saudi Arabia invented a time machine and the plane barely clipped the edge of the building. <laughs> a warehouse in California has, in a surprising twist, turned out to be an illegal Chinese-run virus laboratory. But in a more surprising twist, Aphex's new twin new EP only has four songs. <laughs> I fucked up the Aphex twin show! <laughs> Here, let me read that one one more time. I feel like it was better. A warehouse in California has, in a surprising twist, turned out to be an illegal Chinese-run virus laboratory, but in an even more surprising twist, Aphex Twins' new EP only has four songs. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. One minute, 35 seconds from the great William Montgomery. How about another hand for William, everybody? Coming out, guns a-blazing. How do you feel, William? I got a shit so bad right now, Tony. Oh, my goodness. I have a horrible doo-doo problem. As you know, I have trouble doo-dooing in public restrooms because I, I jump in the shower after I doo-doo. I don't wash my butt. It really does. One of the most unbelievable things that I truly... And I, I mean, it's kind of... It's kind of become an issue with us. It has turned into a point because of Because I literally, sometimes I'll tell them, like we were just in Hawaii, for example. I, we do it all over the road, like e everywhere. Everywhere we go, I'll be like, you know, all the people on this airplane right now wipe their butt after they go poop. I don't think you people understand. When William says that he gets in the shower after taking a number two, it's because he doesn't wipe his butt. He gets off the toilet and straight into the shower and then wipes it with his, like, finger. Can you describe with what With my fingers, yeah. I lather them up with soap. It just, in my defense, it used to take me fucking 20 minutes to wipe my asshole, and I was just like, I'm sick of this shit. Let me just jump in the shower, get some dial soap on my hands, and then that's how I discovered my fucking hemorrhoid, Tony. I had my hands up in my butthole and by the way the hemorrhoid is still fucking there i felt it earlier tonight i'm not even did kidding. you ever think that perhaps you wouldn't have hemorrhoids or doo-doo problems if you weren't fingering your ass every time you had to take a shit tony i don't give a fuck dude i love jumping in the fucking shower after i take a shit it's a way i decompress at the fucking end or beginning or the middle of a long day just Getting in the shower, putting the hands in my butthole. Have you ever done that, Ty? I definitely have. <laughs> <laughs> Got your back on this one. <laughs> Sometimes he does it when he's not in the shower. Ooh. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that funny, dumbass! <laughs> I mean, it does boggle my mind because I don't think you understand. There's a lot of jokes that happen here, especially with William. It's very, very, he's very, very diabolically outside of the box. But I want you to know that this is literally not a joke. He doesn't shit in public because to him, he finds it to be, which is impossible, by the way. This is totally a mental thing in your head that it takes you longer to wipe than everybody else in the world. I wipe until there is the shit is off of the toilet paper, but it turned into there would be blood on the toilet paper because I was what having to wipe so much. Don't people wipe till the shit's off their butthole? I mean, what am I missing here? I do. But here's the thing. Here's a fun fact. Seriously, what am I missing here? No. <laughs> yes, every... Everybody wipes until the shit is off of their asshole. You are correct, William. You're halfway to the finishing point of what but many people learn, I believe, at the age of perhaps less than one. Four, three. Well, when, do, when do people get potty trained? Three? three? Yeah. Okay, you guys got some slow kids out there. But... <laughs> All right. Yeah, what did so, you just fucking say right there? <laughs> so about 
three years old. By the way, this is another one of those instances. Make some noise if you guys wipe your ass. All right, now watch, watch this, watch this. Make some noise if you don't wipe your ass. Okay, okay we got a couple seriously, of Seriously, though, are you just making that noise to be funny? Yes. Yeah, okay. William, kick him out of here. Yeah, I mean, who is that? Is that my fucking drunk-ass father out there? Who is that? You know, no, I've I'm talked kidding. to his girlfriend about this before, and the worst part is that he keeps poop in the drain. Like, like shit will fall off his ass and go in the a drain. And he has yeah, to like, so there's little clumps of poop that he doesn't clean. I mean, it is as disgusting as you think it is. Do y'all believe that? Do y'all really think I leave shit in the fucking drain after every time I do this method? I clean it out. I swear to God, my drain is clean. Well, now it is because your girlfriend literally yelled at you until you could no longer take it. And by the way, instead of yelling at you, this is how wild this relationship is, by the way. She taught you how to, she trained you. She yelled at you to the point to where you clean the shit down the drain, but she didn't yell at you for not wiping your ass. <laughs> It's steps. It's called baby steps, Tony. We're taking baby no. steps. No, 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 no. Okay, well, I promise I'm going to think about starting You're to wipe to my butthole. You're going to think about starting to wipe your ass? I'm going to think about it. Maybe I will tonight. Maybe after the show, I'll go shit upstairs because I swear to God, I ate How some much meat. for a cameo of you wiping your ass until the shit is gone? It's weird you say that. These, these people have been getting, I've been getting these such weird requests, like to show, literally to show my hemorrhoid, to show my nipples, to well, show my feet. Well, here's a fun feet. fact. Here's a fun fact is that he doesn't always get all the poop off his butt in the shower because he had his girlfriend take a picture of the hemorrhoid and she took the picture and tell, tell, tell the people what happened. Yeah, there was shit on my asshole, okay? I was horribly I embarrassed. I got my girlfriend, I was like, I want to see this fucking hemorrhoid. And before I could even see the hemorrhoid, there was the shit ring around my butthole and it kills me. He showed me the picture. This is what I get for taking him on the road with me. He's like, dude, check this out. Because I take pride, maybe you're kind of right, Tony, because I take very good, very great pride in the fact that my butthole has to be so clean. But you have yeah, the dirtiest th butthole out of everybody in the world, dude. It's itching right now. <laughs> I swear to God, it's itching down there. I think the horse women can feel me on that. You know they got itchy buttholes. They do not. They do not. Look, they're all shaking their heads. Clean as hell. <laughs> all four of them okay. at once. Okay. You, you do not tell a woman she has an itchy butthole, William. Those are grown-ass women over there. They find it unacceptable. Okay, I'm sorry, bitch. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. That is wild. I mean, I'm embarrassed about this butthole thing. I'm embarrassed people are going to think differently about me, but I swear, Tony, I have to shit so bad. I might have to do it up. I might have to do it tonight. Honestly, I would recommend, like, butt wipes, like dude wipes. Uh, the, the mint dude wipes is one of my favorites. Red Band, can you slow down a little bit? When I know you, you're, you're slow so because fast. you don't even know how to wipe your ass, but you should use dude wipes. Are we really going to fucking do this tonight, you dumbass? No. What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> I don't want to be gay anymore. <laughs> yeah, it is incredible. <laughs> I mean, isn't that a gay man's nightmare is just going down there and it's a fucking chocolate factory? We know I you like the Charlies, but no chocolate factory, right? I stopped at the hemorrhoid. It's yeah. So yeah. you wouldn't kiss my bottom? You wouldn't kiss down there? Definitely not, William. I okay. love you, but no. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> wow. Do it, wow. do it, do it, do it, do it. Known homophobe John <laughs> Dees starts a do it chant on the kissing <laughs> of the best asshole. <laughs> oh, wow. Very interesting, John. <laughs> he just got off the airplane. Just got off the airplane. <laughs> you can be gay if you just got off an airplane. Everyone knows that. <laughs> yeah, it's called Jet Fag. <laughs> hey! Boom. William, we love you. Anything else you want to say to these people? I just want y'all to know that there might be shit on my butthole. I don't know, 60% of the time. But it doesn't change the fact that Aphex Twin literally only had four fucking songs on that. It's like, why do you fucking tease me like that, bitch? <laughs> Yeah.
Why do you tease me like that, bitch? Why are you always teasing my ass like that, bitch? <laughs> William Montgomery, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. We did it again. Did you guys have fucking fun tonight, huh? actually went to a gay wedding for the first time this past weekend, and I think the most exciting part was when I started protesting outside the reception with members of my congregation. <laughs> now confirmed after months and months of denial, Joe Biden was indeed on business phone calls with Hunter Biden, but they now claim the conversation was about stuff like the weather. Yeah, I guess there is a 100% chance of making it rain. <laughs> First it, was, <laughs> for, uh, first, it was Joe knew nothing about Hunter's business. Then he knew about it but wasn't involved. He was involved but only talked about the weather. In six months, it'll be, well, yes, Joe knew it was crack cocaine, but he only made the stripper butt smoke it for 30 seconds. <laughs> Justin Trudeau and his wife are splitting up. Wait, so now she suddenly doesn't like black guys? <laughs> How pissed are you people right now? Post Malone is on stage, but he isn't performing. That'd be like going to the strip club with Hunter Biden, but he opts not to impregnate a stripper. <laughs> That's my time. Well, 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 he's done it again, ladies and gentlemen. The record holder all time, the most prolific force in the history of Keltoni, William Montgomery has arrived. It's so, it's so nice to be here. Earlier uh, tonight, Post Malone, you mentioned something about dude wipes. I actually... I'm very excited to announce after the episode last week where I was talking about my hemorrhoids and the, butt, the shit in my butt all the time. I am now the new spokesperson for Dude White! Mint flavor. Seven year, $40 million contract. Same contract Scotty Pippen got. <laughs> That's what I asked for. Same fucking contract Scotty Pippen. <laughs> and they gave it to me, so it's really nice to bear. Da -da. Oh, Sir, we know you in the dude wipe community. We actually call you the Scotty Pippen of dude wipes. We know this. I'm the Scotty Pippen of dude wipes. You've heard it here first. I specifically asked the people at dude wipes. I was like, I want Scotty Pippen's contract in 96, his contract. What the fuck am I talking about? It's just nice to be up here tonight. <laughs> All right. So here we are, brand new deal. How do you plan on spending some of the millions of dollars? Oh, he's pulling them out one know. by Hold one. on, I can smell your fucking asshole right now, you oh, nasty shit. piece of shit! The fuck are you doing sitting on the front row, dude? I can smell your butthole from a mile away. <laughs> this might be one of the most brilliant sponsorships I've ever seen. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, William, I'd like to ask a question about dude wipes. Yeah. Uh, what about hard to reach nuggets when I'm on a cross country flight? <laughs> That's a funny question. <laughs> Dude wipes aren't gonna fucking help you, Kurt. I mean, what are you? You need something else. You need to shave down there. I started shaving my butthole last week. I was able to get around the hemorrhoid. It's now the size of a pretty large grape. It got bigger again. It got down to the size of a small grape. It's back up to like a medium-sized grape, but yeah, I totally recommend, Kurt, uh, just shave down there. Just yeah, get I got trimmer. hemorrhoids too, dude. I thought we were gonna bond over that. Is that a fucking threat, you piece of shit? What the fuck? No, dude. I thought... I thought you cared about dude wipes. I thought there was a product that could help me. I see I was mistaken. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> so you say dude wipes won't help him, right? After you just signed a seven-year, $40 million contract. Your answer was dude wipes can't help you with a hard-to-reach nugget on a long flight? Yeah, they're not built for that. They're built for other things. I mean, you want... Uh, there's this new other new product. What the fuck am I talking about? Post Malone, I have to say, I know you are involved with uh, the chicken place. Um, Raising Cane's. Is yes, there sir. any way, would you ever think, uh, do you need a new spokesperson for Raising Cane's? I mean, I'm on the fucking brow to be a spokesperson of these different places. Maybe you'll think about it or... I'll, I'll, tell, we, me, I'll tell you what, me and Todd will take a look at it and we'll... Do you have a like a resume or like something like something yeah. like this? And hold on, Todd's gonna be there. <laughs> yeah, he's my boss. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, I have a resume. I could totally. And also, shoot Kurt, over. I wanted to say he's not in the lab, so he's just a, he's just the face. He has no say over how the product. It's like reacted. the George Foreman grill. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like this is your grill, George Foreman. So can you give us like a little pitch of what your Raising Cane's uh, vision yeah, is, yeah, William? Yeah. What? Yeah, whatever you have, I'll send it to Okay. Yeah, just do it straight to camera. Welcome to Raising Cane's. My name's William Montgomery, and if you're hungry, I got something for you. It's called a Caniacs Combo. <laughs> it comes with a 32-ounce drink. You get six pieces of chicken, two sides of fries. Maybe piece of bread, maybe some other stuff. <laughs> but if you're hungry, get that KDS combo. I'm gonna be there with Post Malone. <laughs> combo that we do together comes with a pack of dude wipes. Yeah. Comes with a pack of dude wipes. A uh, 32 yes. ounce Sprite and some dude wipes for your asshole. <laughs> but it doesn't help with dingleberries. Kurt, why would you fucking bring that up? Uh, can I tell you Are something? Are you trying to make I me look bad? No, I, I don't believe you even have a sponsorship with dude wipes. Oh, that is... Yeah. So first I find out Lizzo fat shames and now you hemorrhoid shame. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I don't give a fuck anymore, Kurt. I swear to God, I've had this thing in my butthole. It's the size of like a large grape right now for about two months. Yeah, so I don't have fucking weak red asshole hair, dude. Red asshole I got hair, dark dude. Italian. Fucking idiot! Wait, I think he's turning into the werewolf. I think it's happening right now. The full moon is out right what now. What time is it? Oh. <laughs> William, what else is going on in life before we let you go? What the fuck else? Dude wipe, seven years, 40 million. Seven You're about years, to go on the road. Million. The brand new William Montgomery shirt is out right now. Yeah, very excited about that. Get on that. Um, also, I was in Seattle this past weekend for a gay wedding. I was very excited about it. My oldest friend, Robert Wallace. And Tony, I don't know if you've read just kind of about the demographics of people in Seattle, but there's a lot of homeless people. I was able to bag four homeless people <laughs> in the span of 48 hours in Seattle. I mean, it was a fucking bloodbath. It got so... How did you kill these people? How did you kill the innocent homeless people? I had a knife. I've been traveling a lot. TSA doesn't find a knife. I have these cowboy boots I've been wearing that have a knife area in them. It's a hidden knife, so I'm able to get through TSA through that fucking... Sh but yeah, I got through TSA with the knife and just started. It was a bloodbath in Seattle. Bl Seattle bloodbath 2023. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you know this, but Ron White was up here earlier with a sweet little dog. Sweeter. I know, I saw it and it reminded me of my sweet little dog is four pounds. I took her to the vet last week. She's now four pounds. And I kiss her tummy. Why are you dancing like that, you fucking idiot? I got a sweet little dog a couple months ago. A couple months ago. Ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Famer, the legend, the Big Red Machine, William Montgomery. <laughs>